using PowerPoint with NVDA, using PowerPoint with NVDA. Hey everybody, it's V Queen here and I'm back with another video in the series How to use Microsoft PowerPoint with NVDA Now, if you haven't watched the last video in which I taught you guys how to populate your slides and the different parts of the PowerPoint window Please be sure to check the link below or just scroll through my channel and go back and watch that video before we get right into this one Now, in this video, I will be teaching you guys how to insert tables, how to insert pictures and also how to do different text and slide formatting but there is one thing I have to say to you even after doing all of this especially where the slide formatting is concerned remember that Microsoft PowerPoint is really a visual program so even the accessibility is limited even after I show you how to do these different formatting and stuff by yourself it's still best especially if you're in a professional scene it's still best to get someone who is sighted to do a final look over at your presentation to tell you that it's exactly how you want it to be so let's get right into it so firstly I have to open up my PowerPoint presentation remember that little one that we we're doing in the last video I saved it as Jamaica Jamaica dash PowerPoint slide one left paren Jamaica right paren dash slide view okay and now we're here so remember we created different slides and I showed you different things to do the different parts of the window in the last video but now the first thing I want to teach you into this video is how you insert pictures but one thing I must say to you to me it's best like when we're doing it ourselves and we don't have any sighted help it's best to insert a picture on a slide by itself because what I realized when you insert it on a slide that already has text like in the the object text box or the subtitle text box it would say obscured which means that the picture is most likely covering some of the text or vice versa so the best option is to create a new slide and insert the picture on that slide now say i want to insert maybe a map of jamaica what i'll do is create a new slide so that keystroke Control plus m slide 2 dash slide view and let me put on a title so tab title placeholder shape enter Edit multi line blank. And then I will put A space M A P space O F space J A M A I C A. And escape. Title placeholder shape A map of Jamaica. Now, let's tab again. Object placeholder shape. Now I want you to enter into this. Edit multi line bullet blank. Now, there are two ways to insert a picture into Microsoft PowerPoint. You have a long way in which you go directly up into the menu and tap down to the option and then you have the quick key tip. So let me show you the long way first. You will press Alt. Ribbon tabs tab control collapsed. Home tab Alt, H2 of 11. Then you right arrow till you hear insert. Insert tab Alt, N3 of 11. Then you enter on the insert tab. Lower ribbon grouping. Insert grouping. Slides grouping. New slide split button collapsed add a slide to your presentation. Alt, N, S, I. Then you would tab until you hear pictures. Tables grouping, images grouping, pictures. That's where we are. Then you will press enter on here. Or let me escape out of this and show you the quick key tip. Insert tab Alt, N3 of 11. Slide 2 left per N, a map of Jamaica right per N, dash slide view, object placeholder shape. The quick key tip or keystroke in order to insert a picture into Microsoft PowerPoint is Alt plus N and then P. So you'll press the Alt and the N together and then you'll press P by itself. So let's try that. P. Insert picture dialog file name colon. File name colon. Combo box collapsed. Edit Alt plus N blank. And then right here what you will do is Shift tab to tree view. Find the folder in which you save the picture, tap back to items view list, find the picture, then click enter and the picture will be inserted into your document. Jamaica dash PowerPoint. Slide two left per N, a map of Jamaica right per N, dash slide view, object placeholder shape. Now, 
it doesn't tell you but the picture is actually there inside the object placeholder shape now what you're going to do is press applications cut remove the selection and put it on the clipboard so you can paste it somewhere else t now we're in the context menu now what you want to actually do is to put an alt text on the image so say for example we're doing a presentation and some visually impaired persons are also being involved in the presentation they want to know what's on the picture as well so when you put an alt text it can actually describe to them what is on the picture so you can down arrow in this context menu to find edit alt text or you can just use the quick key tip while in this menu which is a jamaica dash powerpoint toolbar edit multi-line blank paint and right here is where you will put the description of the image so f i g u r e space one space a space i l l u s d r a t i o n space o f space d h e space m a p space o f space j a m a i z a then you will tab generate a description for me button then click enter on here use intelligent services then tab not now button and enter on this button jamaica dash powerpoint slide to left paren a map of jamaica right paren dash slide view object placeholder shape figure one a illustration of the map of jamaica and there it is also i want to let you know that you don't have to actually enter into the object placeholder to insert a picture you can actually while exited out of all text boxes also insert a picture now before we continue there's one more thing i want to mention about the pictures there are a lot of different things you can change about the pictures different formatting size position stuff like that that same context menu that we opened that's where you go and down arrow and click on what you want to click on and change the different formatting of your pictures if you so desire but that's it for inserting pictures now to inserting tables i want to insert a table on my location slide instead of the text that i have in the object placeholder box so let me do page down to find that slide slide three left paren location right paren dash slide view let's tap to object placeholder title placeholder shape location object placeholder shape it is located in the caribbean now let's press delete to delete what i have in this slide three left paren location right paren dash slide view all right no i want to insert a table let me enter in the object placeholder edit multi-line bullet blank now to insert a table there are two ways as well you have the long way and you have the short way the long way in which i go up in the menu and then the short way which is the quick key tip but let me show you where you go up in the menu first you'll use your alt key ribbon tabs tab control collapsed home tab alt h2 of 11 right arrow to insert insert tab alt and 3 of 11 press enter lower ribbon grouping insert grouping slides grouping new slide split button collapsed add a slide to your presentation alt n s i tab till you hear tables tables grouping and right here you would click enter but now let me show you the quick keystroke or key tip so escape out of this insert tab slide three left paren location right paren dash slide view object placeholder shape edit multi-line bullet blank now the quick keystroke or key tip in order to insert a table is alt plus n and then t so let's do that t table data grid 1x1 table grouping 1x1 table 1 of 80. now just like in microsoft word it brings up a table dialog in which right here where it says 1x1 you can use your right and down arrow to increase the number of rows and to increase the number of columns but what i realized and i've tested is that when we use it this way in order to insert the table once the table is inserted nvda stop announces to you what you are doing so the best way to go about inserting your table is either down arrowing from here until you hear the insert table option or you can use the quick key tip which is to press the letter i I. insert table dialog insert table window number of columns spin button 5 edit 5 insert table dialog now 
right here you can edit the number of columns so i want two columns so let me backspace blank the entry must be a positive number help balloon then type in two two now let's tab to the rows number of rows spin button two edit selected two and i want two rows as well so i'm finished making my table so let's tab till i hear okay okay button and press enter jamaica dash powerpoint slide three left paren location right paren dash slide view object placeholder shape row one column one edit multi-line blank so you see it places me in row one column one and you realize it says edit blank so that means it's currently editing so you type what you want in row one column one right here so let's do that p a r t s a o f s a t h e s a c a r i b e e a n and then once you want to ship over to the other cell you would use the tab key row one column two edit multi-line blank and you would edit here g r e a t e r space a n t i l l e s then you would press tab to ship to the other cell row two column one edit multi-line blank and edit c o n t i n e n t then tab again row two column two edit multi-line blank n o r t h space a m e r i c a and then when you finish you can just escape and your table will be created but there is one thing i want to show you first if you realize that you need more rows you created less rows than you actually wanted right at the end row right here that's the last row and the last column once you're in that cell once you press the tab key it will create another row so let me press it row three column one edit multi-line blank and you realize it creates a third row but before we escape out of the table let me show you that there are different ways in which you can also format the table or each cell in the table so while in a cell on the table you would use your applications key to open the context menu so let's press that cut unavailable remove the selection and put it on the clipboard so you can paste it somewhere else t so let's down arrow through the options copy unavailable font bullets collapsed numbering collapsed link smart lookup learn more about text use synonyms collapsed y translate merge cells unavailable merge the selected cells into one cell split cells split the current cell into multiple cells select table t format shape new comment add a note about the cut unavailable remove the selection and put and that is it for the context menu and one last thing I want to say before we exit out of the table. In order to do a lot of other table formatting options, what you do is to go up into the menu and if you right arrow, you would realize that there are two extra categories added into the menu. That would be table design and table layout. And for stuff like selecting different cells, inserting cells, columns, rows, deleting, and all of that great stuff, the best tab to look under would be the table layout tab. And you can format the table as you so desire. So let's escape out of this. Object placeholder shape. And don't worry, even though you just hear it say, object placeholder shape there's actually the table inside of it because if i click enter right now it will bring you straight in row one column one let's click it and see row one column one edit multi-line selected part of the caribbean there you go now let's escape out of that again object placeholder shape slide three left paren location right paren dash slide view and also with the table just like the picture you don't have to create it inside the object placeholder but i think that is the best option for you so now let's get into some formatting first i want to format some headings so let's get to my first slide so i can use the quick keystroke which is the home key slide one left paren jamaica right paren dash slide view now let's tab to my title box center title placeholder shape jamaica enter edit multi-line selected jamaica okay and jamaica is selected now i want to see what type of formatting is currently on this line of text so i can use the keystroke insert plus f calibri light 60.0 black so the font is calibri light apparently the size is 60 and the color is black so let me escape out of this jamaica dash powerpoint Slide one left paren, Jamaica right paren, 
dash slide view, center title placeholder shape, edit multi-line selected Jamaica. Now for this heading, I want to change the color to green, one of Jamaica's main colors. I want to make it bold and I possibly want to change the font as well. Okay, so we have our text selected. There are two ways in order in which you can change the font and different font options on your text. There's the keystroke for the font dialog box and there's a long way in which you go up into the home menu. Now, for changing the font itself on a text, especially the heading, I really recommend that you use the menu to change the font itself. Because what I realize when I'm in the font dialog box, it gives me a little issue when I'm on the font option in order to change the font, which it takes much longer. So the best option to change the font itself is to go up into the font menu. So I would use my keystroke, Alt H to go straight to the home tab. Then you tab through. Edit multi-line selected Jamaica. Ribbon tabs tab control collapsed. Lower ribbon grouping. Home grouping. Clipboard grouping. Paste split button unavailable until I get to font. Cut button, copy split button, format painter top, office clipboard, slides grouping, layout collapsed, reset button, re section collapsed, font grouping, font combo box collapsed, pick a new font for your text. Calibri light left paren, headings right paren, edit selected Calibri light left paren, headings right paren. And then I will just down arrow until I hear the font that I want. Or, like how I know my font starts with the letter M, I can use M to get to it quickly. M. Agneto selected. And then I will down arrow until I hear the font that I want, which is Monotype Cursiva. Monotype Cursiva. Monotype Cursiva selected. Then I can escape. Jamaica dash PowerPoint. Slide one left paren. Jamaica right paren. Dash slide view, center title placeholder shape, edit multi-line selected Jamaica. Now, in order to change the different aspects of my font, I want to use the font dialog box. So let's open that using Ctrl plus T, as in Tortilla. Font dialog all text effects, font window, tab control, font tab selected alt plus N one of two. Now, I'll tab through. Latin text font combo box collapsed. Monotype Corsiva edit selected Monotype Corsiva. Then tab again. Font style combo box regular collapsed alt plus y. I want it to be bold so I'll down arrow here until I hear bold. Regular. Italic. Bold. Then tab again. Size spin button. 60 edit 60. I don't want to change the size so let's tab again. All text grouping. Font color collapsed C. I want to change the color. So I'll enter on here. Font color data grid. Theme colors grouping. White, background 1 not selected white, background 1 1 of 71. And I want green, so I'm gonna use my right arrow until I hear the color green. Black, light gray, blue dash, blue, orange, gray, gold, accent, gold, theme color, blue, green, white, back, green, green, accent 6, lighter 80%, not selected green, accent 6, lighter 80%, 20 of 71. Then I'll press enter on it. Font color collapsed C. Then I'll tab again until I hear the OK button because I'm finished changing all that I want to change. Underline style, effects grouping, double strike through, ch superscript checkbox, subscript checkbox, offset spin button, small caps check, all caps ch equalize character, OK button, space, Jamaica dash PowerPoint, slide one left paren, Jamaica right paren, dash slide view, center title placeholder shape, edit multi line selected Jamaica. Now, while I have the text still selected, let me do insert plus F let you see that the formatting has been changed. Monotype course of a 60.0 yellow dash green white bold. You realize? It is monotype cursiva, it's bold, and it's in a yellow dash green color. And that is how you change the formatting on your text. But I'm sure you don't want only the formatting on your cover page to be changed. What if you want the same heading style that's on your cover page to be on the other slides as well? There is a way to copy and paste the formatting of any text. Now, while you have the text selected, you can use the keystroke Ctrl plus Shift plus C to copy the formatting. So let's do that right here. And it won't say anything. 
But now let me escape out of this text box. Center title placeholder shape Jamaica. And let's press page down to go to my next slide. Slide two left paren, a map of Jamaica right paren, dash slide view. Let's tab to that title. Title placeholder shape a map of Jamaica. Press enter. Edit multi-line selected a map of Jamaica. Now, I'll do insert plus F let you hear the formatting on this. Calibri light 44.0 black. Now, in order to paste the formatting onto this heading, I would use the keystroke, control plus shift plus V. So let's do that. And now, let's do insert plus F again. Monotype course of a 60.0 yellow dash green white bold. And you realize, this heading also has that formatting. And I want you to know that that works with the other text on the slide as well. So not only for the headings, but for the other text on the slide, this is how it works. And if you want to bold just one word in a line of text, you'd have to highlight just that one word, then you'll go into your font dialog box, and then you'll be able to change all of that. You'll be able to change the different fonts of the different text and all of that stuff. But wait, I almost forgot to mention, same like in Microsoft Word, Ctrl B for bold, Ctrl I for italics, and Ctrl U for underline, those all work in these text boxes as well on PowerPoint. Also your Ctrl C for copy, your Ctrl X for cut, and your Ctrl V for paste. I also want to mention that the same keystroke is used for your spell checker, which is F7. And if you need a refresher of how the spell checker works and also all those other different editing keystrokes, you can check out a website which I will link below with those different notes. Also, Ctrl plus spacebar is used to clear all formatting. So if you want to start fresh after all that different fonts and stuff, Ctrl plus spacebar is the way to go. Now let's escape out of this text box. Title placeholder shape a map of Jamaica. One last thing I want to show you in this video is how you can format the slide itself. Now we're going to go up into the ribbons to do this. So let's press Alt to go to your menu. Ribbon tabs tab control collapsed. Home tab Alt, H2 of 11. Right arrow. Insert tab Alt, N3 of 11. Design tab Alt, G4 of 11. And we're on design. Now I want you to enter on here. Themes button each theme uses its own unique set of colors, fonts, and effects to create the overall look and feel of your slides. Variance button customize the look of the current design. Customize grouping. Slide size collapse change the size of the slides in this presentation. Format background button find dash tune the formatting for your background or hide design elements from the current design. Pin the ribbon toggle button press need a bit more space. Collapse the ribbon so only the tab names show. Themes button each theme uses its own and we're back to the top. And just for the fun of this video, let me enter into the theme and see if I can change the theme of my slide. Themes data grid. This presentation grouping. Office theme office theme colon. Used by all slides one of 42. And now let me use my down arrow. Office grouping. Office theme not selected office theme two of 42. Organic not selected organic eight of four. Basis not selected basis four. Dividend not selected dividend 20 of 42. Droplet not selected droplet 21 of 42. And you can use both your down and right arrow to go through this menu. But I want the droplet theme, so let me click enter on it. Slide 2 left paren, a map of Jamaica right paren, dash slide view. Title placeholder shape a map of Jamaica. Title placeholder shape a map of Jamaica. And that is how you change the slide formatting of your slides. And as I said before, this is really a program for visual persons. So after you do all of this, putting in your themes and your colors, I'm sure you're going to need the help of a sighted person to make sure what you're doing actually looks good, looks professional, but I just want you to know how you can access the different things and where the different things are. But guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a lot in this video. And I want you to stay tuned for the next video in which we'll be doing some transitions and animations and stuff like that. So that's it. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell to be alerted when I'll post the next video in this series. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on it. I'll see you guys next time.